Join us today for an action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball, where we review the 2023 season of the Toronto Blue Jays. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by Locked On Sports Network, your team every day. As always, you're your number one host for all your fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Matthew Ane, and you can find us on all social media and platforms, podcasting apps, and if you can, please leave a five-star rating and a review that makes us look good on Apple or Spotify or wherever you may listen. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, click the bell below so that can subscribe you to the uh, podcast and give you an alert every time we drop a new episode. Please also subscribe to us on our subtext for a more in-depth, personalized experience with the Locked On Fantasy Baseball crew. That includes myself, Matt, and my co-partner, Dom, who is not here today on the Friday show. Um, you know, you get all your awesome questions answered, draft rankings, and everything else that this offseason is going to bring. So please join us there. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase Jace Case, providing you with personal supply of five antibiotics that can treat 50 plus infections. Get get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-E-S-E medical.com. All right, guys. We have a cool podcast for you today. So, we are going to be talking about the Toronto Blue Jays. A lot of good names, a lot of disappointing names in terms of fantasy. And overall, as a season, they made the playoffs. They were a good team. They did pretty good, especially in a really challenging AL East where, honestly, everybody but the Yankees in Boston made the playoffs, which was pretty disappointing. So, it's interesting. I think I think there might be a season where, you know, one only one team is left out because once everybody's rocking and rolling in that division, it's just going to be really hard. So we shall see. It's a really good division, really good players in this division, and especially on this team. So let's dive in, right? Let's talk about, obviously, their best player, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Vladdy, honestly, we look at his stats overall for the season. It was good. It was a good year. But there was some stuff that really just left us wanting for more. And, you know, like, yo, what happened, essentially, right? So let me read off his stats, and then we'll talk about it, right? 602 at-bats, 78 runs, 30 doubles, 26 home runs, 94 ribs, five stolen bases, 67 walks to 100 strikeouts, batted about 264. Now, honestly, you look at this, and okay, that's a really good season. But here's the thing. You drafted Vlad in the first round for one reason and one reason only the power the runs the ribbies and quite honestly 26 home runs isn't getting it done for you you would expect at least six more to 10 more to honestly 20 more that's what vlad's upside is that is why you drafted in the first round in some cases the first five picks okay other than that you could have just had freddie freeman as the first baseman you could have got him at the end of the end of the first round and you would have been happier with his production versus Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s Vladimir Guerrero Jr. also had a down year in runs he had a down year in in in, um batting average as well I mean I just really hope he could return to form of that 2021 season where he had 48 home runs batted 311 123 runs and 111 ribs like I think he still got it the kid's not washed at all whatsoever and this is not a horrendous season but i will label him as a bust and for one reason and one reason only you picked him in the first round and he did not perform to the first round talent that he is so with vlad the way i'm approaching him this year is i i'm honestly drafting him below freddie freeman and that's it that's as low as i'm willing to go is number two first baseman i am not drafting him in the first round this year um it's just not happening i think he's a strong early second round pick, but I'm not wasting my first this year. I need him to bounce back before I can put him back in that round. 
first uh second round is not like burying him it's just hey this is what you need to do if you take him with like the 11th or 12th pick and you just don't like the options around there i actually won't blame you but that is the highest i will say hey that's it you know what i'm saying 11 12 pick in the draft but all right enough on vladdy honestly there isn't too much to just say hey point out that's bad i could nitpick essentially being that you draft him in the first round let's move on let's talk about kevin gosman gosman man he is just good he is just really good kevin gosman is somebody that i'm going to be honest in all my rankings i always just sleep on and i'm not sleeping on him next year there is no way kevin gosman again just has another great season this year 185 innings 237 strikeouts, a 316 ERA with a 117 whip. And also the FIP, which is fielded, fielding independent pitching, which is a predictive stat for, for a pitcher. If they had average defense playing behind them, what their actual ERA would be. And it was a 297, which means he pitched even better. It's not much better, but still a sub three, man. And honestly, like I'm surprised he ended up with a plus th- a plus three ERA because the way he was pitching was just bananas. He just really showed out, and it's it's crazy. I think last year I had him in like my twenties. He should be up there. Like honestly, he should be borderline a top twelve pitcher. And I won't blame you. Like you walk away with him as your one. Like you're in great shape. I I really do feel comfortable leaving leaving the draft with him as my one at this point. He's done it for what now? Who well, let's see. ERA has been good since honestly 2020, I think, was when he really turned the corner. He had that those two seasons on the Giants where he really, like really showed out, went to went to Toronto and then boom, exploded in terms of like, you know, like really solidified himself as like, you know, second year real strong. Did it again this year. Now I think there's no reason he can't do it again. 2024 it's only going to be 33 pitchers get better with age because it's not like playing checkers up there on that mound it's playing chess you know it's a mental game it's a lot harder than getting out there and swinging a bat in my opinion because you know you gotta there's a whole much so much more that goes into pitching than there is to hit a ball and you know kevin gosman really is one of the most elite pitchers in the league just well done mr gosman well done and for fantasy do not overlook him next year We're going to be talking about him a lot this season. I have some bold, bold predictions for him coming for 2024. But okay, let's move on. Let's talk about Jordan Romano. Jordan Romano, great season, called it. He was like my number two closer this year. And rightfully so. I hit that one right on the head. He had, uh, what do you call it, 59 innings pitched. He had 72 strikeouts. He had, where is it? 36 saves. He had a 2-9 ERA with a 1-2-2 whip. Whip was a little higher than I'd like, but hey, it was just one of those seasons he also dealt with injury. So, you know, I, I'll let that slide essentially, but the strikeouts pretty much where they're supposed to be. He wasn't like, you know, but uh, gosh, it's slipping my name. The, the, excuse me, tonight is not my night, but the closer for Baltimore that got hurt. Um, I believe it's Batista, but don't don't quote me on that. It's one of those nights. This is my second podcast in a row. But anyway, he's not like that where, you know, you're having like well over a K per nine and, you know, it's really impressive. And that really would set him above Romano in that aspect. Romano's good. I mean, look, like I said, he has 59 innings pitch and has 72 strikeouts. That's what? 12 more, 11 more. I mean, 13 more uh, Ks per nine, essentially. I mean, it's great. Good job, man. Like. It's really like making me feel good about you, but he's not like the super elite, but he's definitely going to get you a whole bunch of saves. And that's the only reason we really draft closers for at this point in category leagues is to get those saves. And he's one of those guys going to pretty much sure up that category. So Romano, great season, great production, didn't boss, did his thing. And honestly, if he would have stayed healthy the whole season, he would have done a lot. He would have had probably a few more saves in there. And before we move on, we talk about some guys that were middling and wish we did better. Some guys that really disappointed and some bright spots that really weren't expected. But before that, I have a great sponsor for you. 
Everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace Case. The Jace Case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use so you can ha have a peace of mind so that you, not, you are not hoping you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the med medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off when using the code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-E-S-E medical.com. Make sure to use the promo code Locked On. All right. So let's talk about somebody that honestly, I'm I'm really like um a little worried about, I think. And I'll, I'll tell you why in just a second here. We're going to talk about George Springer. George Springer, quite honestly, was is somebody that's, you know, sounding the alarm for me. The worry o meters up. I'm about a six on the Richter scale. And here's the reason why. I'm just like a little, I'm a little wound up about this. 87 runs. 613 at bats, 87 runs, 25 doubles, a triple, 21 bombs, 72 ribs, 20 stolen bases, batting 258. So here's here's how we look at George Springer, right? In 2019, he had 39 home runs. In 2017, he had 34. But ever since then, he really just hasn't been able to really stay on the field, which would show his low home run, explain his low home run numbers. Like in 2021, when he only had 22 and he had 299 at bats. But last year, he only had 25 home runs and 583 at bats. Now, that is concerning, but also, too, only about five short from 30. But here's the thing this is a decline because now this year he only had 21 and he had 613. He had 100 more at bats this season and had four less home runs than the previous year and is nowhere close to. 39 home runs, let alone 30 home runs, or even 27. Like, what is going on? The ribbies are down. Not from last year, just from what you expect from George Springer. The runs are fine because he's on a good team. He gets on base. But even the batting average has been declining since 2019. That beautiful 29, uh, 2019 season at 292 batting average, then 265, 264, 267. Now it's 258. What is going on with George Springer? Honestly, for George Springer, we got to approach him a much differently this fantasy season. I feel that we're going to have to lower him in the rankings, lower our expectation for George Springer, but just know there's a ceiling, right? And also, it's not like George Springer doesn't come with his warts either because George Springer, injury prone. He's only really managed to stay healthy for the last two seasons. And, you know, he's always good for a little stint. This year, he actually just managed to stay healthy, which is great. But... Who's to say what's what's the bring this year? He's going to be, what, 34 years old. And we're seeing a decline already. I mean, and it's not like he hasn't been injury prone in the past. What's what's stopping him from getting hurt next year? What's, what, what's the decline going to look like next year? Or is he going to have a bounce back? And that's the question we got to ask ourselves. And then we got to evaluate in our hearts where we feel comfortable taking that risk reward uh, draft pick. And as we get in the season, as we look at him in spring training, as we start hearing more reports about things, whether he's doing good things or bad things, is all going to control the ebbs and flows of where we're going to draft him in 2024. So George Springer is going to be a very interesting case. And quite honestly, somebody that we're going to really have to evaluate. And we're going to talk a lot about him, too, going into next season. So stay tuned with us throughout the offseason. But we're going to continue here. We're going to talk about Mr. Bo Bichette, another guy that just... You know, you look at his numbers as a whole and you're like, okay, like some of it's good. What is going on with my internet? This darn computer here. Here we go. <laughs> Can I get a little interaction, please? Sorry about that, guys. Internet issues were resolved now. We're good. We're ready to rock here with Boba Shet. So... Ultimately, what's going on with Boba Shed is I'm going to read off his stats, then we'll really get into it. 571 at bats, 69 runs, 
30 doubles, three triples, 20 bombs, 73 ribs, five stolen bases. Walk out the strike, walk to strikeout ratio is atrocious, like always, 27 to 115, batted 306. So there's some bright spots, there's some ugly spots, and then there's why did I draft him this high? So you look at his stats on this year. Okay, batting average check did a really good job. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, 73 ribs on this team where he had 93 last year. Yeah, that's concerning. 20 home runs, whereas we're really drafting him at his ceiling because we're expecting another 20, 21, where he had 21, 29 home runs. Yeah, this is ugly. I even would have took 25 to 26. I would have been happy there. But 20, that's not getting it done for where he was being drafted this year in the second and third round. Also, too, five stolen bases in a year where stolen bases were in incredibly much higher. Yeah, that's not doing it for me, especially when we're hoping for a 25 stolen base season. He didn't even break 10. Like, that's ugly, too. And the runs were down. For a guy that hit 306, his runs are down. Like, that's ugly. 69 from 91. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not really happy with this production at all for where we had to draft him this year. He he really did bust for his draft price. Not that he's not a good player, but it's a bust. Now, I'm hoping he could bounce back, but I'm not I'm not ranking him high at all. Uh honestly, let me look at my rankings. I think I think I've kind of I've kind of readjusted to where and my expectations for him going in the next year. And I have him at 10, which isn't like Barry, but you know, I'd rather take guys that just perform this year versus the guy that we're 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 hoping to see something that happened two years ago now. And like you know, you can't you can't hang hang your hat on that. You now have to kind of move on, change your expectation, and kind of say, okay, that's his upside, his ceiling play. But what is the actual realistic expectation that we could see from Bobuchet? And quite honestly, we shall see. I uh, I think ten's a fair ranking, and I'm probably going to stick it there. And I, in all honesty, too, I'm probably going to be avoiding him in the draft season as well. Well, let's move on. Let's talk about Mr. Chris Bassett. Chris Bassett, bright spot. Really nice bright spot of this of this lineup here. Good year. First year with Toronto. Uh, you know, 200 innings pitched, 186 strikeouts. He had a 360 ERA, and he had a 117 whip. Great stats. One thing that sticks out to me and is going to be a warning for you for next year is he had a 428 FIP. Now, I already explained fielding independent pitching at the. Oh no, I have it in this podcast. Sorry, I did two today. Oh no, I did with uh, with Kevin Gossman. But ultimately, predictive stat. So, if he had an average defense, which I think it is about average, he would have pitched about a four two eight. Now let's bring that. Let's go to the mean. He probably would have had about let's say a four, maybe a three ninety near three nine. Now, still, those are great stats, but. I really hope everybody just reels back their expectation and just says, hey, Chris Bassett had a a good year, especially first year on a new team, and he's going to be successful next year, but I don't know if we're going to see a 360 ERA. I think it's going to be more like 375, 380. I think the strikeouts and inning numbers are real. Uh, the win potential, if this team can actually get it together, I think is legitimate. He already had 16 wins, so maybe he gets a few more chips in a few more. And he stayed healthy this season. So there was a lot of stuff that just screams, hey, Chris Bass is going to be valuable next year. He's probably going to come at a nice price, not an overwhelming price. But if he creeps up anywhere before your pitcher three, don't touch him. Just avoid him because I'm going to tell you right now, Bassett can just implode at any point in time. He's a really good pitcher, but he's getting up there age 35 next year. He just kind of scares me and in that regards, but I will feel really comfortable at, at a pitcher three, but nothing higher, nothing higher than that. All right, now let's move. Let, let's, uh, let's keep going here. But before I do, I have one last sponsor to go for, but I have a guy that really surprised me this year and then a bunch of duds. And you'll, you probably already know who I'm talking about when it comes to this team. Starting November 1st, for the fourth year in a row, Ibotta is giving 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving feast. Just 
Add the offer in the App Store to redeem your 100% cash back on everything you need to make your Thanksgiving feast complete. All you have to do is shop at your favorite retailer and upload your receipt. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, your PayPal account, or a gift card. You can also earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers, too, when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and much more. Download the Ibotta app now and use the code MLB to get 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving dinner starting November 1st. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use the code MLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use the code MLB. <laughs> Sorry, you probably hear my wife screaming about the Phillies in the back. <sighs> it's definitely crunch time here, and let's hope they could pull it out. But now let's talk about Jose, uh, Jose Barrios. Oh, man. So here's my thing. If you've been watching this podcast for a while, you know that we are not fans of Jose Barrios. And you know what? I'm telling you right now, this is fool's gold. 100% fool's gold. Okay, you'll say, Matt, but it's his second year on the team. Maybe he's used to it. No, 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 no. This is fool's gold. He has not been really good in a while. 2021 was a nice season in a mixture of going across two different teams. But ultimately, I don't think he's that good. A 523 ERA last year. Okay, we'll get into it. This year, good season. 189 innings pitched, 184 strikeouts, a 3.65 ERA with a 1.18 WHIP. Great. Now, spoke about FIP, 3.99 FIP. Okay, it pretty much tells me this dude had a four ERA. Okay, kind of more of what I expect. Next year, we are not drafting him as a pitcher three, a pitcher four, or a pitcher five. I think next year, we're going to get a reality check. We're going to bounce back to the norm at age 30. And I think that, quite honestly, he's like a six pitcher if you're feeling frisky, honestly. I don't want to touch him. I will not touch him. And that's quite, quite honestly it. And I know Dom feels the same way. We both just hate this dude. And it's without a doubt because... He's fool's gold. He gets you so hyped up because the expectations we've been waiting for with this kid just never lived up to the hype. Never. He had one really good season. One really good season for me. And that was 2019. And a decent one in 2021. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think that was really there. I think it was just a mixture of going to a new team and some of those bats didn't see them, didn't see him. So he was able to kind of skate. And then instead of facing these teams in the division again, he was able to go against new opponents and then therefore gave him an advantage and was able to keep his stuff fresh. Even though, and last year they kind of saw it and he was, that's why he posted a 523 ERA. So I know we just got to take this with a grain of salt, not buy into the hype, but if you get him at a value, maybe he's worth a shot. I will leave that up to you. Me personally, my advice is, hence why you're listening to this. For me to give you advice is avoid, avoid. This is how I look at it too. I rather him have a great season on somebody else's team than have a horrendous season on mine. And I'm screaming and kicking and yelling and breaking the keyboard because it's like, oh, I should have listened to Matt and Dom. But again, to each his own, take my advice, form your own opinion and do what you want with this advice. But all right. Enough of me hating on some dudes that actually did good. Let's talk about Alec Manoa. Alec Manoa was primed to have a big season, but instead he ate way too much prime meat, way too many burgers from McDonald's, and gained about like 40 pounds and looked like Fat Albert out there on the mound. And Alec Manoa had a horrendous, horrendous season. Like, got sent down twice. Bad. Only ended up having... 87 innings pitched. And this is just like out of nowhere, but Dom called it. And it's, it literally makes me so mad. I had him ranked like my pitcher 15. Luckily I didn't get a single share of him this year, but man, if you did, I'm so sorry. Cause I gave you bad advice. I'm not perfect guys. 
Uh, I'm good, but I'm not that. I'm not perfect. And, you know, if you looked at what Alec Manoa, Stepping Stones, what he was doing trends within the right direction of how I look at young pitchers going into their third season after leaving their second full season when they have a real MLB pitcher workload. He had 196 innings pitched last year with a 224 ERA and had 180 strikeouts. I figured this year would have been the year he just, you know, repeats it, fights for Cy Young, and just we say, hey, let's go. Because he won, I th- believe, I'm looking at it, yeah, he I believe he won a Cy Young last year. If I'm look, if I remember correctly, I'm looking at his awards now. No, he was third on the list last year. So is what it is. But anyway, um, Manoa just really didn't do it for for us this year. I feel like hey, we got to really just see if he figures out if he uh, you know went to Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers or you know. Uh, a food intervention and he loses some weight and then we could reassess if we see him come out at spring training and my guy is looking fit looking like a machine looking like the guy again then we'll go okay cool alec manoa my guy i'm gonna pick him up i'm gonna get him at a value this year we'll see what happens you probably get him for free unless he's really lighting up which he might if he lost the weight he's probably looking fantastic people like oh alec manoa's back we shall see Let's move on. I, I can't waste too much time on a, on this guy. So about my biggest disappointment this year, and that's Alejandro Kirk. Kirk really, really, really disappointed me. I had him as like my pitcher one or two. Another guy I was wrong on. I just figured the 2022 season was was repeatable and then some, because he was rock solid. But I didn't, I didn't, you know, buy into all the red flags. I figured ah, it was just adjusting. Oh, unfortunately, the red flags were real. This year, 372 at bats, 34 runs, 16 doubles, eight homers, 43 ribs. Walk to strikeout ratio is really good. 42 walks to 45 strikeouts, but batted a measly 250. You look at it and you go, you look at the season, like, bro, you really didn't play. You really couldn't get on the field. Uh, you know, the power was zapped. I really thought he would have earned himself almost an everyday role by this time. And he would have been, you know, doing his thing. It said Danny Jansen imposed and other other units and Kirk just couldn't get it done this year. And honestly, you look at him and he's undraftable. He's buried at this point. I have no faith. I think he's done. I think he's washed. I think that Alejandro Kirk is just not going to be a good fantasy asset for draft season. He's going to be somebody I'm going to tell you on our illustrious magical first watch list episode of the season. Alejandro Kirk is going to be on that name. One of those names on that list, unless he mashed all throughout spring training and just looked like the Alejandro Kirk that I thought he was going to be. And I'm just a year too late. So if he's just like looking, all right, but he looks fit, we're going to go, okay, Alejandro Kirk, watch. Let's see what he does after a week. And if he comes out mashing, we're picking him up. We're hitting a full scent, but we shall see. Alejandro Kirk is going to be a name we're just going to keep an eye on and see where he ends up for next year. All right, it's our last guy. I might sneak in another one. We shall see. Let's talk about Dalton Varsho. Another disappointment. So, disappointment part one. He is not going to have the catcher eligibility. He did not play an ounce of it, so it is gone. So, cheat code, gone. Also, too, we overlooked, again, the rule. New year, new team. You know, going to have some down parts. But there were some bright spots, but not many. So, 527 at-bats, 65 runs, 23 doubles, 3 triples, 20 home runs, 61 ribs, 16 stolen bases. Walkout to strikeout ratio is what it is. <laughs> um, it's just horrendous. And batted 220. Now, you look at his last year stats, right? Where, like, okay, this is where the hype started. 531 at bats, 79 runs, 23 doubles, three triples, 27 home runs, 74 ribs, 16 stolen bases, and batted 235. The line that's different is the seven home runs. Bad average, who cares? Because it's still atrocious. And the runs and ribs. I figured going from Arizona to Toronto, obviously before Corbin Carroll and what this team is looking like and doing, 
he probably would have taken a step step forward, gotten a lot more stuff. The hype was real. He was do, going to do his thing and really be, you know, this like stat counter and just like bolster up runs and ribbies and possibly hit 32 home runs this year. That was my expectation. Batting average is always going to be horrendous. He was pretty much going to be, you know, a Joey Gallo. And the fact that you saw him at catcher was the cheat code, but that's gone. So I look at Varsho and I'm not really touching him uh, unless he's like my UT or my first bench guy. Uh, other than that, I don't think he's worth starting because of the batting average, because the unknown, but we shall see. I think he'll bounce back in certain categories. I don't think his career, his career is done, but you know, we're just going to move on because he's not a catcher, but that's all for today. I want to thank everybody for listening. Make us your first listen each and every day. Make sure to tune in for our next episode where Dom is going to talk about the Tampa Bay Rays. But until next time, guys, peace.